Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and applications. Today we are going to have a 16th lecture and this lecture is uh, basically on Jacobi method, Gauss-Seidel method and successive or relaxation method. Look at this, if you quickly recall what we did in the last lecture was how actually the eigenvalues and eigen systems would influence the solution of the system Ax is equal to b by using factorizations, right? Matrix factorizations. Now today we are going to see the iterative method which we call it as Jacobi method. Let us start with a system Ax is equal to b. In the equivalent form, you can write it as x is equal to bx plus d and then start with the initial vector x of 1 of the solution vector x of 1 to generate a sequence of approximations x of k iteratively. So, it becomes x of k plus 1 will be equivalent to b times of x of k plus d where b is the matrix. Right? Now, the x of k converges to the solution when k tends to infinity. When k is becoming bigger and bigger, then x of k converges to the solution. If you look at the system Ax is equal to b, given a coefficient matrix A, given a right hand side values B, you wanted to find out a unknown vector x by using any of the iteration methods. Either it could be Gauss-Jacobi method or it could be Gauss-Seidel method or it could be successive over relaxation method. There are three well known, there are three well known classical iterative methods, Jacobi method, gauss seidel method, successive over relaxation method. These three methods differ from the way the matrix B and the vector D are computed. So you can write it as x of i k plus 1 will be equal to 1 over a i i times of b i minus summation j is equal to 1 i not equal to j n a i j x of j of k where i is equal to 1 to etc. And this coefficient matrix is in the form A is equal to D plus L plus U. D is the diagonal matrix and L is the lower triangular matrix and U is the upper triangular matrix. U is the upper triangular matrix. So, in essence, you would be writing it this coefficient matrix A as the combination of matrices, lower triangular matrix, upper triangular matrix, diagonal matrix. So, the lower triangular matrix is like this. This is a main diagonal, right? And uh, zeros and non zeros. Similarly, upper triangular matrix also we have in the same fashion, right? We would see what is the form of this L and U. Look at this. This is the form of L. This is the main diagonal. These are all non zeros, or at least one of them is non zero. And here, necessarily, all are zeros. This is what is called the lower triangular matrix 
and see that here this is the main diagonal these are all at least few of them are non-zeros and lower side necessarily they are zeros you get as upper triangular matrix so upper triangular matrix this is lower value zeros upper will be there will be a non-zero values at least few this is upper triangular matrix in the lower triangular matrix so therefore all lower will be some non-zeros and upper will be zeros that is the non singular matrices both are non singular matrices so lower triangular matrix and upper triangular matrix and d is the matrix d11 d22 d33 dnn so this is zero and this is zero diagonal matrices this is the diagonal matrix now we can define this matrix b b of j will be equal to minus of d inverse l plus u b of j is equal to minus of d inverse l plus of u where l is the lower triangular matrix u is the upper triangular matrix d is the diagonal matrix diagonal matrix so we can write this small of d of j as d inverse of b d inverse of b similarly in the case of gauss seidel method right so x of i k plus 1 you can write it as 1 over a i i b i minus summation j is equal to 1 to i minus 1 a i j x of j k minus summation j is equal to i plus 1 to n a i j x of j of k so i is equal to 1 to etc j is equal to i plus 1 i plus 2 etc so i is equal to 1 to n etc so this matrix is what is called gauss seidel method this matrix is what is called gauss seidel method so necessarily as we spoke and all this a i i would be free from 0 so that means a 1 1 not equal to 0 a 2 2 not equal to 0 a 3 3 not equal to 0 in general a n n not equal to 0 so that means we will have the gauss jacobi method and gauss seidel method so if you take an example i will give you an example x plus y plus z is equal to 1 x minus y plus z is equal to 0 x plus y minus z is equal to let's say 2 and you wanted to start x1 of 1 is 1 y1 of 1 is 1 z1 of 1 is 1 so you want to start with uh, initial vectors 1 1 1 in the beginning you want to start with initial vectors 1 1 1 in the beginning so what is happening in this case in this case x if you want to compute it will be 1 plus minus 1 minus 1 that is equal to minus 1 right in the second case so it is minus y is equal to minus x minus z that means y is equal to x plus z so what is y is equal to x is 1 plus z is 1 so which is equal to 2 similarly in the third case z is equal to x plus y minus 2 so x is 1 y is 1 which is 2 which is 0 
that's what the, this is the one case other case is whatever you get here x1 you are subsequently using in the immediate step for y similarly whatever is x y are known immediately you will be using while computing this z so one is the stepwise displacement another one is simultaneous displacement right okay that is the basic difference between these two methods so this idea is to use each new component as soon as it is available in the computation of the component that is done in the jacobi method so the idea is to use each component as soon as it is available in the computation of next step so this is not done in the jacobi method right so whereas in the jacobi method whatever we do is simultaneously we use it not actually updating at every time so essentially we can write it as gauss seidel method bgs is minus of d plus l whole inverse into u so whereas this uh, d of gauss seidel small s is nothing but d plus l whole inverse times of d and you can write this as x of k plus 1 you can write it as x of k plus 1 is b times of gauss seidel x of k plus d of gauss seidel of g so that's how we can extract the values of dgs and bgs now in the case of successive over relaxation in the case of successive over relaxation we can write it as xi of k plus 1 that is equal to omega of aii summation bi minus summation j is equal to 1 to i minus 1 aij x of j of k plus 1 minus summation j is equal to k plus 1 to n aij xj of k okay and adding plus 1 minus omega times of xi of k i is equal to 1 to x to the i is equal to 1 to etc you can write it so x of i plus 1 x of i plus 1 is omega upon a i already omega a i i which we have chosen which is free from 0 right and a 2 2 is free from 0 a 3 3 is free from 0 like that you do have a n n in fact it is free from 0 So essentially the matrix form we can write it as SOR method. So this omega is what is called relaxation parameter. Relaxation relaxation parameter. So B the success of relaxation is D plus omega L all inverse and D is the diagonal. and L is the lower triangular triangular so then the above iteration can be written as x of k plus 1 is equal to b times of x x so relaxation x of k plus d of s o r so if omega is equal to 1 which we call it as a relaxation parameter so i call it as gauss seidel method if omega is equal to 1 then it is called a relaxation parameter gauss seidel method right so omega is what is called the oh, i mean uh, the relaxation relaxation parameter so consider the matrix a 
right? So x1 plus 5x2 plus x2 is equal to 7. So these are the equations. So if you start with initial vector origin, so if nothing is being given, it is understood that we are starting with the vector 0. So Jacobi method which you get is 1.4 and 0.84 and it is 1.0640 and is 0 0.9744, 1.0102, 0 0.9959, 1.0010. Similarly, for the second, you can write it as 1.4 and this is a very slight change you could see here. So, that is the case of Jacobi method. So, all the values you are using at one time. In the Seidel method, you see initially whatever we have taken, initial value is fine and you are keep on updating whatever is available. For x2, we are using x1. Similarly, for x3, you are using x2, x1. So, that we are doing it every step. So, obviously, this would be supposed to give you better okay, solution. In the successive relaxation, what happens is omega is the what you call relaxation parameter. relaxation parameter. So, you are assuming this as 1.2. So, therefore, the values are 1.40, 0.9968, 0.9964, 0.9969, 0.9969, 0.9969, 0.9969, 0.9969, 0.9969, 0.9969, 0.9969, 0.9969, 0.9969, 0.9969, 0.9969, 0.9969, 0.9
for any arbitrary choice of x of k and if and only if, if and only if b of k approaches to 0, b of k approaches to 0 as k approaches to infinity. So, note that b is convergent if and only if rho of b less than or equal to 0. This is what is called spectral radius. If the spectral radius happens to be less than 1, then you will have convergent solution. Now, let us rho of b is equal to maximum of lambda 1. So, the maximum value of the eigenvalues. Where lambda 1 is eigenvalues of the matrix B, in particular rho of b is equal to rho, less rho of b is equal to rho of a minus 1. In particular, rho of b is equal to less than or equal to norm of b. Thus, if b is mod of b is less than 1, then the convergent solution is guaranteed. Unfortunately, the converse of this fact is not true. That is, if the solution is convergence is guaranteed, you cannot have eigenvalues. They are all belongs to the matrix rho of b. Right? This is the converse, which is very, very important. Now, let us see some corollary. If A is strictly rho diagonally dominant, if A is strictly rho diagonally dominant, then the Jacobi method converges for any arbitrary choice of the initial approximation. So, if you make sure that if A is strictly rho diagonally dominant, that means mod of A11 greater than or equal to sum of the elements in that particular row, mod of A22 is greater than or equal to sum of the elements in that particular row, this is what is called the column wise. Diagonal dominance this is called column wise diagonal dominance. Now, let us see simple example. Consider the following matrix A 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 1, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1. Now, by using the Gaussian elimination process, multiply the first row by minus 5, minus 1, minus 2 and add respectively to the second solution through fourth rows at the end of this step, we would end up with the matrix called B. See here, first matrix is as it is. Second matrix, you will have zeros. You have brought all the zeros. And if you go to this, the in terms of matrix multiplication, A of 1 is nothing but the matrix multiplied with A. Similarly, we eliminate the entries of the second column of A below the mind diagonal. So, multiply the second row of A of 1 by minus 1 by 3, minus 3 by 4 respectively and add respectively to third and fourth columns. So, we should get this matrix. Well, in continuation to that, when you write again in terms of matrix multiplication, we write A of 2 is equal to, this is the one matrix and this is another matrix and it ultimately amounts to write it as M2 into A of 1. M2 is the matrix and A1 is the, the modified matrix. Similarly, when you write the eliminate the entries of the third column of A below the diagonal, multiply the third row of A2 by minus 1 by 2 and add to the third row. So, ultimately you will end up this thing. So, this is the main diagonal, this is the sub diagonal, below this will be zeros. So, it is obviously an upper triangular matrix. So, what you did was, you brought the original system into an upper triangular matrix. So, if you continue the next step, what you do is A of 3 is equal to, this is the main diagonal, this is the element and you have got this matrix. When you multiply these two things, let me call it as M3 into A of 2. So, therefore, in this process, we can continue. Note that to form A of k pi minus 1, k is equal to 1, 2, 3, neither the matrices nor mk are product of matrices mk times of a, mk times of a2, etc. need to be performed explicitly starting with a, the process constructs successively the matrices a of 1, a of 2, a of 3, a of n and the second column below the diagonal is and so on and so forth. So, therefore, the final matrix a of k minus 1 is an upper triangular matrix the key observation is that each of these matrices is the result of pre-multiplication of the previous matrices by an elementary triangular manipulation, by an elementary lower triangular matrix. 
So therefore, what we studied in this lecture is, we studied about Gauss-Jacobi method, Gauss-Seidel method, Gauss iteration method and what are the pitfalls of these methods and what are the occasions to use these methods and what is the convergence criteria for each method you have studied. So thank you very much for listening to my lecture. Thank you very much.